questions. Have you ever had food poisoning? If you've ever had food poisoning, then you're probably interested in watching this video. So the UW Farm participates in a program called GAP. GAP stands for Good Agricultural Practices. There's also a program called GHP, Good Handling Practices. The difference between the two is GAP is about the production, uh, handling, packaging, and distribution of fruits and vegetables grown in the field that are unaltered. GHP are good handling practices if we change the shape or form of those fruits or vegetables. So the UW Farm just does GAP. And that means that uh, we voluntarily participate in this program. Uh, in Washington State, it's administered by WSDA, so an inspector comes from Washington State Department of Ag to the farm and looks at all our policies and procedures. So what are the things that we do to minimize uh, microbial uh, populations or reduce vectors for disease? We keep our fertilizers separate from any of our harvest equipment. All our tools that we use in the field for planting are kept separate from the tools we use for harvesting. Starting off on a harvest day, and we look at the field and look to see if there are any uh, pests. If I do find something, I'm gonna mark it so it's really clear to the staff uh, to not pick that item up. So, so we have to do a lot even before we harvest. All students um, read this if they're gonna participate in the harvest. Really short, quick training, the 17 steps that make up um, our policies. So there's the pre-harvest inspection, there's harvest time, which is where a lot of that sanitizing takes place. And then we'll go to the field after these are all sanitized. All the surfaces with a bleach water solution. And you can't use the same sponges for sanitizer as you could for soap. It will change the pH of the uh, sanitizer and make it less effective. So these are pedestals, so we have to keep our harvest coats off the ground uh, because of rabbits, birds, people, um, any, any kind of issues. So these are, we keep the coats off the ground by putting them on these when they're flipped. And these are being cleaned as well. Um, and I start with soap. So these get stored outside um, in an unprotected space. It does not have a roof because we don't have enough space on the farm. So out in the field, I'll take my bin, I'll put it on top. And this is the combination that we use out in the field. At another farm that I was at, we sanitized a wheelbarrow and we put the toad in a wheelbarrow and we just went out into the field. But at the UW farm, our walkways are only 18 inches wide, so we can't, we just carry this into the pathway. We take our tools that we're going to use to harvest any of the plants or crops that we're harvesting um, and we sanitize them in a bleach solution. Um, so we'll dip them in, wash them, um, and then use them to harvest all our produce. Keeping tools off the ground is really important is to stick your tools in like this so that um, they never hit the ground. So a, a knife like that that's on the ground has to go back and be sanitized before it can be used again. We sign that every day. One of the important things that we take into account for food safety is it's really important that we get the produce out of the field as fast as possible and cool it down. Uh, plants, our crops are actually living uh, as far as they're respirating. They're still photosynthesizing and still evaporating off of their leaves. So the first thing we try to do is cool them down and we try to maintain that cold chain or that drying chain all the way through the field to in the wash pack uh, when we transport, when we put it into the cooler or in dry storage and then transporting and then dropping off. Once all of our 
our produce is harvested, we head back into what we call the wash pack area. Um, this is where we sanitize all of the tables in there as well as the sinks to prepare for the veggies coming in. This is how the produce arrives uh, from Mercer Court here at the wash pack. So it's on the back of the truck. They're in totes that must have a lid. So these are flip top totes. And um, we then offload it and bring it to an area in the wash pack called uh, from the field because the bottom of the totes might be contaminated. And we move the veggies through the wash pack very linearly. So we come in and we make sure that the totes with the veggies in it are going onto a sanitized tables. Then they'll immediately end up being scrubbed and washed in our sinks. Really important that students realize the different respiration rates, cooling, curing, and dry storage methods because that'll mean that that produce item, that vegetable, will last fresh as long as possible for the consumer. There's different types of cleaning. Some, so salad greens, you would spin dry. Heads of lettuce, uh, we rinse twice or three times and we turn them upside down to drain. But salad greens, which are cut in lots of loose leaves, have to go through three washes, get loaded into a spinner, and spun incredibly dry in order to last a very long time. The other thing is when we cut um, zucchinis, we actually don't wash them. We clean them with cloths. So people are learning what's the best way to clean, which can be interpreted in lots of different ways. So one of the real uh, sort of aha moments that students have is that we don't wash any of our beans. And you never refrigerate potatoes or onions. You actually, we don't refrigerate any tomatoes either. That's for dry storage. But things like broccoli and asparagus, you need to field cool them or put them in water and get them in a cooler as fast as possible. As they get moved through, we'll re-sanitize the totes that they were sent into one more time and put them onto an additional table to get ready for the truck. When we pack the CSA, we have some clean totes already that we have from the day before that we're going to reuse and we're going to uh, pack all of our produce into. So we clean all the tables, we sanitize all the tables, make sure our hands are washed. When it goes into the wash pack from the field, we have to make sure that it's packaged properly, washed properly, and labeled properly. So we have special stickers that identify our produce. This is going to include the date of harvest, um, the outlet it's going to, so that might be to our CSA, to the dining hall, or to the pantry. Um, what it is, including the variety of the vegetable, as well as the weight of it, and how many, so the count. And that's how we keep track of our veggies. As they're distributed to these different outlets, if anything were to happen, we can look back at this harvest date and look back at the date that people were in attendance for harvest and we're able to keep track of what's going on at the farm. And we also bleach out the truck before we put the totes inside that, which means that we have a couple of five gallon buckets with the bleaching water solution and we dump that throughout the truck. Truck, and this is our delivery vehicle, sanitized. It's really important that the harvest for us is a very short period of time, um, maybe a day, maybe up to seven days, that it's stored properly, but also very quick delivery. Um, our produce is very minimal packaging, um, it's aerated, but most of us when we go to the store, when we buy greens and we buy produce, it's really sealed in a bag and because our food travels on average 1500 miles before it reaches the store or maybe our homes it's sealed and there's a lot of microbial activity occurring in the packaging so in the past shorter distance for food to market um, generally closer to home farms were closer to home and when you bought a head of lettuce it was not sealed. Now when we buy greens, largely it's sealed in these boxes. So longer distances, uh, sealed in plastic, fluctuations in temperature that occur on that journey in the chain from farm to your fork are, are really influence whether th something is, is gonna have cause food poisoning. 
So some people might ask, why would a university farm or campus farm or really any farm participate in this program? It does have a dollar attached to it, a sort of price tag. It is somewhat expensive. But on a university farm, in order for a farm to sell back to campus, to dining, to an institution, there's definitely a heightened level or requirement for food safety. If we were selling to a restaurant, it would be similar. Uh, households as well. But uh, we do it for to obviously make sure that everything we sell is actually improving people's health, <laughs> not poisoning them. Uh, we want a model uh, of food safe system, urban food system, uh, if for academic reasons and also for the community. When people come and volunteer on the farm, they're learning not just how to grow food, but also how to grow food safely.